drafted a lot of players from this game, just the importance that you put on the players here and what you see here. Well, look, this is a great game. It's a great uh, uh, accumulation of a lot of really great players around the country. Uh, it's close proximity to us, so we can bring over pretty much our entire staff without uh, putting a lot of effort into that. And so we do. And we bring all of our coaches over, bring uh, all of our scouts, obviously, and we get really good access to the players and, um, and we get really good feedback from them. We just gain a lot of knowledge that maybe we didn't have uh, prior to going, going into this game. So it's a very important aspect of our process. And uh, we try to uh, turn over every stone possible while we're here. How much can this week further an evaluation along in terms of maybe your initial grade on someone when you just watch them on the band? To... Well, we say to the players, it's our first opportunity to get to know the player, you know, get to know the person. Uh, we know him as a player on the on the tape, and then getting up close and personal with uh, you know his background, and getting a little bit deeper into the makeup of uh, what we're looking for uh, in our locker room. So um, it, it does change, you know, it does change from you know uh, certain aspects of it. We get to learn how how uh, a guy learns, how he understands football. That that football knowledge and base is extremely important to us as well. So that's how um, grades change in, in some cases. How, how would you evaluate just where the team's at in general right now, kind of going to the offseason and start the draft process and all that? Well, I mean, uh, that's that's really between Mickey and and, um, and Dennis, but, you know, I think we're in a good position to, to get better, obviously. We're, we're not where we want to be. Um, obviously, we made some coaching changes, and so, you know, there's a process that goes into that as well. But uh, I think I do think we have a good core group of, of players uh, that we can build on, um, you know, and from, from my standpoint, I'm always ready to induce young young talent onto the football team. So I'm very excited about doing that as well. And when you guys do eventually get the, the new OC, does that change anything with the evaluation process, like as far as tailoring maybe to, to what that person needs for their scheme? Yeah, you already answered your question. Yeah, obviously, we do. We tailor it to what he's looking for. There may be an offensive blocking run scheme that we're looking at, and that uh, that usually generates a different type of player that we're looking for, maybe a little bit more athletic versus a – uh, a bulky guy in, in the middle, so um, you know the, uh, receivers change, tight ends change, you know whether we're playing with a fullback or not. So yeah, it can it can definitely change um, a little bit of the landscape of what kind of player we're looking for, because we want it to be uh, we want that player to schematically fit what we're doing on offense. So absolutely, just like we do on defense. And what what is your evaluation of how it could still work out for Trevor even after two years of having? Well, he's had one off season. He's from a small school. We feel really good about Trevor. Um, you know, there's some things that he obviously needs to work at, and and he knows what those things are. Uh, I, I do feel like there's there's too good of an athlete, too strong of a player, too um, too many ups, too many things that he does well that uh, he shouldn't end up developing into a good player. Now, whether that's inside or outside, you know, right or left, you know, those are all going to be determined by his coach. And uh, but I think we've got a good plan and um, making sure we get the upside out of it. Do you see him as a player that could potentially shift inside in some form? If it's really not my decision, uh, but yeah, I do think he could. I know last year we asked you about Tulane guys. You spoke highly of Tajay Spears. He ended up moving up. I think you told us last year you like mobile quarterbacks, but just what have you seen from Michael Pratt? Did you have a chance to see him play this year? I know it's only been one practice here, but just kind of a, a brief evaluation if you could. Yeah, Michael's uh, really smart, um, very accurate. I would pretty much call him a more of a pocket passer than a, than a dual threat guy, but he does have legs uh, to to move around and 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 improvise and do some nice things. We have a nice grade on him. He's uh, he's a great kid. Uh, Willie, before he left to go to Houston, we had a we had him over the office and we got a really good evaluation of him. So looking forward for him to compete against these other you know quarterbacks here in this game and see how he uh, you know balances out with that group. And that's early, kind of but uh, philosophical question, just kind of the evaluation process for you. Are there things that you say I will never change and kind of just like resolute on versus things that I remember like Deion Jones showed up here and weighed like 210 pounds and it just seemed like so light for a linebacker whereas things kind of change in the league. Where do you go on kind of yeah. like where you stand in your evaluation process? Well, you, know, you never say never. I mean, and I've been in this league for almost 30 years. You're constantly evolving to what the, what the college game is giving you and, and how the NFL game is being played. And... You know, you, you bring up Deion Jones, and yeah, so there was a time where I was, I wanted 235-pound linebackers, and now, you know, most of the linebackers are playing in the 220s because it's everybody's getting spread out. And so you have to be, you know, and you're looking for cover linebackers. And so 
you have to evolve. Uh, there's some things that I, that I uh, don't go too far from what I've learned. Uh, there's a lot of Parcellian things that I've learned that I'm, I'm not going to um, veer too far off of, makeup, intelligence, and things like that. But sizes of players are, are changing. Um, skill sets are changing, and so you have to evolve uh, to make sure you're getting the best athletes on the, on the, on the field. Has the profile of the hydrushers changed at all over the years? Is it more speed now than maybe it used to be? Or? Um, well, I think we're just open to different body types of rushing the passer. You know, there, there used to be these, all these 6'4", 34-inch arm, 270-pound, you know, defensive ends, and now guys are getting to the quarterback, and they're, they're a little bit smaller, a little bit faster. I still think you have to play with power, um, but they come in all shapes and sizes, and uh, you have to be ready to uh, have a really clear vision for how are you going to utilize that player. Um, but they, they, they've really all come in uh, all kinds of shapes and sizes, but uh, I think you just have to be open to um, – adding that player, but having a real clear vision how you're going to use them. And some of the recent picks, obviously, your injuries have made it difficult to kind of get an idea of what you really have into Peyton Turner and, and Afoski, even Marcus back you know, before he left. How do you kind of marry that with the ideas like, okay, we think we scouted the right guy, but we just never have gotten a chance to see that on the field? And that's a tough answer. That's a tough question. I really don't know the answer to that. I mean, we have enough information on Marcus. We certainly have enough information on Peyton to feel good about the athlete, uh, but you just don't know about the durability and the availability. That's the unknown in this sport, and some you know injuries are part of the sport. Um, you can't predict them. You know whatever injury he had in college is a different injury that he's had in the pros, and you can't predict those things. I wish we could. We do a lot of evaluation and analytical study on injuries and things like that, and there's again there's there's no there's no predictor of it. It's uh, unfortunate. I don't know exactly, but. Uh, is it the evaluation of guys that size, though? Uh, are, is a 300-pound edge rusher more prone to injury than a 250-pound edge rusher? I don't believe that that would be the case, but we do study that. Yeah, we do study that. How do you feel about last year's draft? Do you think it's very good? I do like last year's draft. I mean, there's. There, you wish we had a little bit more information on some of the guys that we drafted. I mean, Nick Saldaberry. We got a really good evaluation of Jordan Howden. We got a really good evaluation of of a Brise, you know, wish we would have gotten a little bit more out of Foskey and you'd love to see the young quarterback play and, you know, Kendra splashed, you know, there in the last game and we feel really good about him. You know, our, our, our postseason evaluations that we had with our coaching staff, man, there's some really uh, glowing remarks on really all of the guys that we, that we drafted. We feel really good about them. You know, from my perspective, you know, going into another draft, you just wish you had a little bit more information to say he is this, you know, and, or he is that. And, um, you know, there's still a little bit uh, of information still left out there that's a little bit unknown. And uh, we, so we just keep continuing to develop those guys. And, uh, but we feel really good about all of them. I know it's early, the but does anything here. jump out in terms of this class, this group, in terms of position and strength? in terms of this group, is it too early in the process to say? Well, look, I, I don't like to get in the strength and weaknesses of draft, but uh, this is a really strong class, I think. You know, since there hasn't been, um, you know, 120 juniors coming out in every single draft. You know, the, you know, the, you, you really kind of start honing in on, you know, guys a lot sooner. And I think that's what we've we've got here. I think there's some really strong um, uh, positional players. Um, there's some really strong offensive players. There's a good 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 group of quarterbacks. Um, you know, so I mean, like, like I'm not going to get into strength and weaknesses, like, but it, but but it, it's a really strong uh, draft, I think. How, how hard is it to have a, a two thousand? That was like the gold standard. Do you? How hard is it to put something like that together? Well, it's very difficult. I mean, you try. You obviously strive to do that every single year. Um, you know, we had a, we had a, I think we had a top 11 pick. We had two picks in the first round. We had, uh, we ended up having three picks in the third round. So, you know, you got to have some ammunition. You got to be well equipped with the resources uh, to have a 2017 draft. We've. Um, haven't had those, that quite a you know uh, resources at the top of the draft or or in the or front end of the draft in terms of the first three rounds, and, and since 2017. So, if uh, if if we're armed with that, 
um, then you got a better chance for sure. How do you feel about your the process? You know, you just went through the process again. I mean, obviously you're here, and, and Nikki and the organization obviously speak lonely about you. But just going through that process, how was that uh, again this year for you? Which process you talking about? For the Chargers general manager. Position. Oh yeah, it's a great process. It's energizing. It's uh, it's exciting. Um, felt like I had a great interview with those guys. I really appreciate the Spanos family for uh, for for interviewing me and. Um, but look, you know, those, those, there's only 32 of them, probably less than that when uh, you got ownership involved. But uh, it was energizing. It was fun to prepare for. It was fun, fun to really dive into a, to a team uh, as, as much as you do when you prepare for those jobs that I normally probably wouldn't do if I'm not interviewing for a job. So it was a lot of fun. How does uh, Cody leave in effect just kind of what you guys do? Um, look, I mean, not, I'm not – Throwing, in, throwing up the white towel or anything. I mean, goodness gracious, uh, Cody's a, is a talented young scout. Uh, uh, he's been with me since uh, since the Miami days. I'm, I'm really excited for him to start a new journey for uh, for, for the Denver Broncos, but uh, we're gonna be just fine. We got a lot of great scouts and a lot of young guys that are elevating up. And uh, I look forward to, you know, teaching another young guy and, um, you know, but we're gonna be just fine. Just back to your ammunition. The ammunition you're talking about earlier. Just how do you feel about kind of where you guys are at now, and then you know, guys are maybe projecting for some comp picks in the middle. Yeah, I think we're going to have some comp picks. I'm not exactly sure what they're going to be yet, but uh, you know, I mean, we do have some ammunition. So I mean, I'm excited about uh, um, you know putting the board together where we can get some really good players. I was just going to follow up about the, the Pete left to go join Sean. Yeah. Just thoughts on you know him partnering up with Sean again. I know you're obviously close with both of them. Yeah, look, Pete's a, an unbelievable person, uh, an unbelievable coach. Uh, we're going to miss him. Um, he's been a lot to, to me just in terms of how we see things eye to eye. He had a really clear vision for what he was looking for. Um, and I wish him, wish him well. I'm not surprised that Sean you know, brought him over. And uh, you know, that tandem was, was obviously good for a, for a long, long time. So um, you know, wish, wish, him the, wish him the best, obviously. Hi guys. Um, yeah, sorry, just one more. How, how do you kind of see the, I mean, not going to give them certain evaluations, but like the quarterback class after the top three, like guys like Bo Nix, Michael Penix, like guys who are here at the Senior Bowl and how that might improve their stock or just kind of. Oh, I think it's a great opportunity to, uh, for those guys to, you know, get in with the teams, um, really get to understand who they are. Um, look, they're, they're, they're broadening their, their aspect, you know, you get the first couple of draft or quarterbacks that can go off early, and these guys, you know, may or may not, you know, but, uh, you know, there's 32 teams here evaluating them, and uh, I think it uh, certainly broadens uh, everybody's scope to uh, what kind of person they are and what kind of player they are. And we always want guys to compete in this game, and, um, and they are, and we appreciate that.